Good afternoon. On behalf of the pastor of St. John's, Father Johnson, I want to extend my uh, sincere gladness to see all of you here. And certainly on behalf of Matt and Debbie, I wish to welcome you to St. John's Church as we all gather, friends and family, to celebrate this beautiful event, a wedding of hearts and minds, a wedding of this beautiful couple before us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Matt and Debbie, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you. Together with your families and friends as today, in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this your joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. Let us pray. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadow the sacrament of Christ and his church, grant, we pray, to these your servants, that what they receive in faith they may live out in deeds. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Tobit. Sarah got up and he started to pray, 
and begged that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words, Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praise be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam, and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two the human race descended. You said, It is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from a letter from St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us. Be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does this concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it had come from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, an inferior one but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, Matt and Debbie, this is the first time in my priesthood that uh, some pretty girls gave me flowers. <laughs> We're here to celebrate a great mystery. And the mystery is, uh, begins to be captured in the prayer of Tobiah and Sarah on their wedding night. They say, Lord, you have brought us together for a noble purpose. And Debbie and Matt, the Lord in his loving providence, has brought you together for a noble and holy adventure, an adventure together as a couple who, as Pope Benedict would say, are to become a living gospel for the entire church. The gospel, the good news, is to be reflected in yourselves and in your relationship with each other. And that gospel centers around our Lord Jesus. Tobiah and Sarah were very wise, as well as very much in love with each other. And in their wisdom, they prayed. And I'm sure they prayed daily for their marriages. We heard them pray on their wedding day, asking God to be the very center of your life. And we have that reflected in our gospel today. The couple invite Jesus to the wedding. And you have invited our Lord to your wedding. And Pope Benedict would also speak of the wedding feast of Cana and the symbolism surrounding the water and the wine. He said the water represents one kind of love, the wine represents another kind of love. And the love that is symbolized by wine is the best of the wines, the best of the loves. Well, what is this love that is represented by water? Well, first of all, in your uh, providential association at work, you came to know each other, you became friends. Well, just because you're friends doesn't mean you, know, you marry each other. There has to be a spark, and we call that the romantic spark. You fall in love. And that is the good love that is represented by water. 
But as you go through life, you will realize that, and you, I'm sure, do already, that the love of Christ, the love of sacrifice and service and emptying of oneself for the sake of the other, that wine, that love, is the greatest. And that is why we are here today to ask Jesus in our worship, who emptied himself for our sake, who wedded himself to the church, and you now become a living symbol of that reality. We ask that Jesus will bless you with all the graces to grow more deeply in love of each other, in that sacrificial, serving love. That is the beauty of marriage. The beauty of marriage was expressed, and I'll leave you with this thought. And I did promise a short homily. Uh, the beauty of marriage is expressed in a beautiful thought by one of the ancient writers of the church. His name was Tertullian, a married man, children. And this is how he reflected in his older age upon marriage. How can I express the happiness of a marriage joined by the church, strengthened by an offering, sealed by a blessing, announced by angels, and ratified by the Father? How wonderful the bond between two believers, now one in hope, one in desire, one in discipline, one in the same service. They are both children of one father and servants of the same master, undivided in spirit and flesh, truly two in one flesh. And where the flesh is one, one also is the spirit. We pray today in great joy that the Holy Spirit may keep you closer and closer to each other and to our Lord Jesus as you go forward on this most noble and holy of adventures. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church, so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the Church, I ask you to state your intentions. Matt and Debbie, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to, honor, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. 
I, Matt, take you, Debbie, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. I, Debbie, take you, Matt, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord, in his kindness, strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Debbie, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Matt, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, please, please stand. Trusting in our Heavenly Father's most loving mercies, we bring our needs before him. After each petition, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Matthew and Debbie, as they begin their married life, that they may always be aware of the presence of Jesus in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our Holy Father on earth, the Pope, all the bishops and clergy everywhere, that they may lead us to a deeper faith in God and a stronger love for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Matthew and Debbie's families and friends, both living and deceased, and for all who help them grow in faith and prayerfully support them on this day of their marriage to the Lord, in the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all travelers, especially those celebrating with us today, that their journeys home be a safe one. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For Matthew and Debbie, that they will always give God first place in their lives, that they enjoy the support of family and friends and the blessing of children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That there may be true and lasting peace among nations and in families for a love strong enough to replace isolation and hatred. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and all leaders of government, 
that they may be effective in achieving peace and eliminating poverty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those prayers and intentions that we hold in silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Most loving Father, we ask you to hear these and all the prayers. We, your children, bring you this day. We humbly ask you this in union with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. with 
Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made on the occasion of the sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you accomplish the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their birth in baptism gives increase to the church through Christ our Lord. Through him with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. seated or kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Debbie and Matt, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through Christ, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing, we humbly, be, humbly beseech you for these your servants, who are joined today in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Debbie, and upon Matt, her companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn their family with children and enrich the church. In happiness, may they, seek, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, they may come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life. Those who are prepared to receive Holy Communion, uh, those Catholics who are spiritually prepared may uh, do so in coming in four, two lines down the center aisle. Uh, anyone who would like to receive a blessing may do so, and you can just indicate that by folding your arms across your chest.
breath, the bread of heaven. Drink this cup of God's love and pour. All who eat, all who drink, never will thirst, never will hunger, forever will have eternal Let us pray. By the power of the sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted so as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and the one chalice through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world of, to God's charity so that the afflicted and the needy may have known your kindness and may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
Go in the peace of Christ. At this time, I am greatly honored to present Mr. and Mrs. Matt and Debbie Brazy. 